So what's the difference between absolute and conditional? Why do we care? Let's take a look at the concept. The main idea is that when you look at rearranging the terms, these two types of convergence are very different. If you have a series that is absolutely convergent and say the sum is s, then no matter how you rearrange the terms, you'll still get the sum to be s. This is a very strong type of convergence. When we look at the weaker type of convergence called conditional convergence, basically the sum can be anything you want it to be. So take a real number r, I can somehow rearrange the terms and make it add up to r. Very strange but true. Okay. Here's an example. The alternating harmonic series that we saw was convergent by the alternating series test. 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth and keep on going forever. We'll find out later that that is actually equal to the natural log of 2. It's a very slow convergence, but it converges to the natural log of 2. We're going to play some hocus pocus with rearranging terms and come up with this exact same series being equal to something totally different. This is because of the weakness of the conditional convergence. We are allowed to do this. And so let's take half on both the left and right hand side. So half of the, uh, the terms on the left is equal to half of the expression on the right. Now let's distribute. Take a half times the one and get a half. A negative fourth, positive sixth, and so on. Doesn't change the right hand side. Still get a half log two. It continues on. I just didn't. And so, great. Now what we're gonna do is uh, throw in a bunch of zeros. So this this hocus pocus of, you know, I mean it's legal mathematics that we're doing, but with this goal in mind to to confuse you. <laughs> We can do this because we're conditionally converted. And so just bear with me as I do this hocus pocus on you and end up with something other than a natural log of 2. Okay. So I'm going to throw a bunch of zeros in with the, re with the reason being I'd like to write my original series on top of this new series, term by term. So what happens when I add these guys together? Let's look at term by term. So 1 and 0 give me a 1, negative a half and half give me a 0, then I get a third, then I get a 0, then I get a fifth, then I get a 0, then I get a seventh. Here we go, where something different happens here. Negative eighth and a negative eighth is a negative one fourth. Now this thing continues on and on and on. And on the right hand side, if I add log 2 and half log 2, I'm going to get 3 halves times the natural log of 2. Okay. Alright, great. Let me uh, go to the animation there. So we get that. But if we look closely at this, we have a 1. We have a negative half. A positive third a negative fourth, a positive fifth. If I was to keep going, I'd have a negative sixth, a positive seventh. This thing would go on forever and ever. Basically, these are the same terms. So wait a minute. On the one hand, it's log two, but on the other hand, it's three halves log two. And so anyway, this is the idea. When you're conditionally convergent, strange things like this happen. So when you see internet videos, popular internet videos that your friends post to Facebook and people start doing this, this crazy rearranging of terms and hocus pocus. I mean, it's legal mathematics, but it's because of the weakness of the convergence that you're allowed to do this. And, and so um, 
just know that in order to be sure that when you rearrange things you get the same sum then your series needs to be absolutely convergent wild things like this happen when you're conditionally convergent and therein lies one of the differences in fact for us uh, it's going to be the major difference not that I would have you doing this rearranging of terms I just want you to understand some of these strange things can happen with this weaker type of convergence absolute convergence will be considered uh, a strong type of uh, condition while conditionally convergent will consider that weak convergence.